welcome back to the channel. It's Lauren. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having an amazing day today. Today we're doing a video I haven't done in a very long time. I used to call them like hauls in retrospect or at the time like a lot of people were doing rehauls and it's basically where you look back at a haul that you've done and you kind of analyze it, see what worked, see what didn't. You could get deeper, you could, you know, go a little bit more which is probably what I'll be doing in this video, but this isn't just any haul that we're looking back at. This is a haul from Black Friday of last year, and it was a doozy of a haul. I bought a lot of stuff. It was my intention to kind of ball out and find some good sales to shop for Black Friday and buy some makeup at a discount, and I did the dang thing. And so I came to you and showed you guys all of the things that I bought, and now I wanna talk about it oh, almost a year later. It's not quite a year, obviously, we're not at Black Friday yet, but I want to share with you my thoughts now looking back and I can't lie to you that it was a lot of money. I spent almost, I think, a thousand dollars. I do also want to be transparent and I feel like that haul, if I'm being completely honest, was a kind of turning point for me and my channel in the sense that it was one of the first times and kind of a marker for me that my channel had turned into something where I am making money. And so makeup purchases kind of now take on a different mindset than maybe they did at the start of my channel or halfway through my channel or whatever, you know, like, and what I'm trying to get at, I guess, without getting too deep into this because this intro doesn't need to be super long. And maybe I'll talk more about this whole aspect in a different video, maybe like a get ready with me or something. But buying makeup is way different now for me than it has been in the past in that it is a part of what my job is. And I feel like that definitely is context that needs to be added to that haul. And I think it's important context to be added to that haul because because doing YouTube, making YouTube videos, there is this sense of investment. Like I kind of hate that, but in a way, buying these products to have for future videos, for that single video and all of that, is a part of the calculation that I make when I'm buying these things and might not be a piece that you have at home when you're buying things. And I'm definitely about like spending your money how you want to, but I just think it's an important distinction to throw out there is that I'm buying this stuff knowing that this is going to help me make content into the future, that I will make money, and really it's an investment that I'm going to reap benefits from monetarily into the future. And I think it's interesting because, you know, I, I by no means am a minimalist channel. I try to have a bit of balance and I do like to talk about just buying things you're actually gonna like instead of just buying things because they're the newest thing. Like that is a big part of this channel, but that video has like almost 40,000 views at this point, which is pretty good for my size channel and my normal views. So I think it's interesting to see how the views correlate to the type of content. And so anyway, I don't know, just another little thing to throw out there into the ether. Anyway, this intro is getting totally off. Let's just get into the products. Basically, if it was a yes, like it's a good purchase, if it's a no purchase, if it's a meh purchase. Um, some of this stuff you guys have seen over my channel because I've been using it. I've been either enjoying it or not or whatnot. Anyway, that's it. Let's just get into it. I'm going in no particular order, but I decided why not start with the kind of biggest purchases that I made during Black Friday, and those were the Natasha Denona, yes, oh yeah. I bought the big blue and green palettes, like blue, purple, green, brown, I think those are the names. Right now they are completely in different orders and also have just different shadows in them. So this is kind of mostly the blue, uh, purple one. So lots of shadows in here. I believe they're 28 pan palettes. And then this is what my green one, green, brown one looks like at the moment. Now the reason that these aren't in the exact order is because this year I got a boxy charm and it had one of these five pans in it, which are the same size as the pans in here. I did a whole video making my own five pans and currently I have this custom one that I've made and pulled shadows from these two palettes as well as the initial shadows that were in this five pan and made my own. Oh my gosh, so long winded. <laughs> so this is what that looks like. I'm wearing a lot of these today, these two shades. And like I said, these are very expensive. These had been on my list for quite a while I had been kind of stewing over getting these palettes and during Black Friday, I'm gonna try to remember best I can prices. I believe these were essentially like buy one, get 
one maybe a little bit cheaper i think i ended up spending like two something for both of them when they're normally like 240 a piece so i felt like it's probably the best price i'm gonna ever get on these and i decided to go for it it was definitely a big purchase and overall i'm very happy with it i don't use these every day they're not my everyday eyeshadows but they are something that i know is going to stay in my collection for a very long time and i think these palettes start kind of the transition to where I am now with my makeup and my preferences and what I like. I definitely have been into some neutral looks as of lately. I've been into those single shadows as kind of like satiny, luxe eyeshadows, one shadow looks, you know the drill. I've been talking about this all year and from like basically last Black Friday. So I think one of the reasons that these are worth it are because you can pull the single shadows out. I think that if that wasn't an option with these palettes, I don't think that I would like them nearly as much. And there's something about these larger palettes, like as much as I hate the price, um, there is something that's kind of cool if you buy into Natasha Denona's like universe, let's just call it that. It's like instead of the Marvel universe, it's Natasha Denona's universe. But if you, let's say, buy in and you buy many of the new releases and you have a lot of palettes with these larger eyeshadows in them, I think it's really awesome that between all the palettes, you can take your favorite essentially shell of a palette and then create your own color stories to go within that. It kind of makes me want to be able to do that, um, you know, just to have the Natasha Denona's and all that. And if you have bought into a lot of the Natasha Denona, you know, palettes, it's something to maybe consider if you wanna get some more mileage out of those palettes, you wanna kind of reinvigorate them. It's almost like fluffing pillows and laying your head on something what feels new, but really is just a little revamped. So very happy with this very expensive purchase. I am specifically so happy that this came into my life because it's kind of an easy way to take some singles from here and make them more travel friendly, make them more vanity friendly essentially so that I can easily get to them use them and it's not so big because I'm honestly not the biggest fan of huge palettes but because this can break down into singles it's been working out um, I I won't go too much into this you know five pan because you can't buy this the way it is I made this again from the blue purple and brown green palettes like it's a couple singles from each of them but I really truly love this <laughs> like I love this little uh, five pan it's probably gonna stay this way for a while but into it. I'm, I'm into it. I definitely want to keep all the stuff in my collection. It makes me happy. It's something that brings me joy and that is good. I love that. Okay, so very happy with that initial purchase even though it was scary. <laughs> it was a little scary. Let's get into other shadows. We'll talk about more shadows. So I bought some single shadows from Nabla. I ended up buying four different singles. I had been wanting to try Nabla single shadows for a very long time and I waited for a 30% off sale, which I think is pretty good. I think sometimes they do 40, but I ended up getting these off of Beauty Bay. As much as I think this is the cute little quad, I think the colors are really beautiful. I definitely like if I could go back in time, know what I know now, know what I know because I I did buy all of these. I really only suggest Water Dream. This is a beautiful single shadow. I'm wearing it today. Let me zoom you in for a sec. I'm wearing it today in that like upper part of my brow bone. That's what this is. It's so beautiful, you guys. It's one of those ones that makes your eyeshadow look wet and I love that. Um, so this is the one, let's zoom back out, that I suggest of all the single shadows and really since kind of itching the Nabla single shadow, itch that I had, I don't know scratching the itch, maybe that's better. But since I did that, I don't have a desire to really buy any more Nabla shadows. Um, I don't. Next, this was a huge one also for the Black Friday haul. This was a brand I'd been wanting to try for forever and I was specifically waiting for Black Friday to be able to shop and this is Menagerie Cosmetics. So I have a large, large palette here with tons of singles in here, like, <gasps> It's a lot, it's so beautiful looking at this, like the rainbows of it all, you know I love it. I went all the way out and that's something that I definitely wanna talk about in this video because I'm trying to quell that a little bit. I've said it before, but I'm an all in bitch, okay? That's how I live my life in a lot of ways and in a lot of ways I love that. Like I am just like, if I'm gonna suggest something to someone, like we should do this, like 
I'm gonna make it happen. Like, we're gonna do that. <laughs> like, even if it seems kind of, you know, out there. I'm gonna try to make it happen um, as much as possible. And I love so many things about being that, you know? But um, when it comes to buying things, what that looks like is when I'm trying a new brand, instead of like, I'll try, 10 or maybe 15 shadows. I buy every single shadow that I ever could have maybe wanted to try from them and then I see if I like it. And I just think, although one of them is fun, um, I think maybe trying to figure out when that is like an actually good idea because you're saving money and when maybe it's like, okay, reel it back. You don't need to be an all in bitch for this. Like, you know, that's something I definitely want to try to dissect. That being said, I bought tons of singles from Menagerie. I also bought the Violet Ink Palette because it was going to be done. Like they were not gonna sell it anymore after it sold out on Black Friday. Mine is missing two of the shadows because they're actually in here. And that's another reason I really like this palette is that I could use the singles in other areas and whatnot. I got a few other things from Menagerie, but let's just talk about the singles. Overall, I'm glad I tried Menagerie for the first time. I'm glad I got these singles on a discount. I will say I don't find these to be my favorite shadows ever. I need to give them more of a try, but I I definitely reach for other things in my collection over these, which makes me kind of sad, like it does. I need to like really give these even more of an effort, but when it comes to these like green and purple shadows I've mentioned this but they stain bad they stain real bad guys it's just something about my person who I am and like I just don't like it to stain that badly and it really is a turn off for me in trying them I don't care all of the time if stuff stains but I mean I can't even like swatch it I can't even touch my little finger in there or I look like I have frostbite like on my fingers they're so stained so immediately so fast and for quite a few days so that is a turn off to me I also I think with these shimmers I I don't know they're not my favorite they're kind of crumbly and I just don't I just don't love them the most I don't think they're bad I don't think there's anything wrong it's just they end up being a meh in my collection just based off of preference. I know so many people love these. I love seeing the swatches. I think that they're pigmented and I can totally see people loving them. I get why people love them. It's just not me loving them. In this case, being an all-in bitch <laughs> made me get a lot of stuff that maybe I didn't need. I kind of wish that I bought the Violet Ink and then bought like maybe 10 singles to try out and I think that would have been a better purchase for me looking back with retrospect because I would have scratched the itch of Menagerie, tried out some things, got the palette that's not gonna be around anymore while also not buying so much that at the end of the day, you know, I wish I hadn't bought as many. So that's kind of the shadows. Some other things I ordered real fast. I got this Textured Tuesdays. It's like a separate brand from Menagerie, but it's still Menagerie if that makes sense. But they do more bath and body type stuff. I picked up the Hot Buttered Rum Salt Scrub. This smells pretty dang nice. I like it. It smells like buttered rum. I've used a good portion of it. I need to use more. I'm super into body scrubs. So this was a nice little pickup during the time. So I'm happy with that purchase and then I think um, this palette I'll have a picture of it here because I don't have it anymore it came free with the order like they were giving them out I think as part of Black Friday but unfortunately that didn't work out very well it was so nice and supple it had their logo on it It was green it felt nice quality except for the glue on it I think I don't know if the materials were just really heavy for the glue or whatnot but mine basically started coming apart immediately where like the outer packaging was coming off of what was glued to the actual palette. I think also the magnet was really strong in holding the flaps down, but I think that put a lot of stress again on that glue and it just started coming apart. So that was kind of unfortunate. I hope they've changed that, but I didn't pay for that. So it wasn't like the biggest downer because I didn't spend money on it. But yeah, that's the menagerie stuff. Kind of just meh for me personally and my preferences. And I was not expecting that. I really did think I was going to like love all of it to death, but just didn't end up working out that way. And yeah, now I know. I wouldn't have ever known. I would have always wanted to essentially make the purchase that I did. So I don't completely regret it, but it definitely informs my decisions moving forward. And I think helps me be a bit of a better shopper in that way. Okay, moving on, let's move on. More shadows because y'all know I can't not get the shadows. I made an order with JD Glow for some new shadows and I ended up picking up, what is this? Six? 
six different shadows. And if you want to know what my favorite JD Glow shadows are, you want to see swatches, I did do a whole video showing my entire collection at the time. I think I've maybe added a few more things since then, but it's pretty close to the full collection that I have. So I'll leave that link down below if you want to check it out. The shadows that I got, this one is Limelight. I'm also showing you them in the order that I recommend them too, just in case you wanted to know. Limelight is a beautiful metallic chartreusey green. So pretty. Love it. It's not like extra sparkly, but it is so metallic and I just love color like that you know then we have anomaly which is a sparkly one of the uh, what do they call them why don't I know this galaxy shadows um, and it's actually one of the galaxy shadows that I feel like fits the name of galaxy I've talked about how I don't think all of the JD glow formulas are created the same even if they're in the same category you just never know honestly you don't know until you get them in your hand and then you're like oh okay mm. but these two are great I really love them great additions to my collection inspiring etc all the things. Peachy Keenan is another one. It is nice. It's like a duochrome. Um, it's not my personal favorite, but if you want a duochrome or whatever, I, I mean, it's it's a good one. It's okay. Then we have these three. This is Plum. I have Bora Bora, and this is Bestie. These are all ones that I just find are all right. If I could swatch them in person, probably wouldn't pick them up. Nonetheless, I couldn't do that, and I have them now, and now I know what I feel like. So these are really the two I suggest. The third one, I can see See why people like it it's just not my personal favorite when I look at my entire collection and then those three so half and half even with everything I've showed you there's not like true regret regrets yet I have a few of those but I think this might be the last when it comes to eyeshadows so I made an order from BH this was a little bit more of a random purchase like I wasn't necessarily expecting to make this but they were having a sale and I was hearing some amazing things so I was like you know what let's do it so I ended up buying the blueberry muffin palette we've talked about this everyone bought this palette because of Angelica so I'm happy with this purchase it's still something that inspires me I of course wish I've used it more like I feel like that's what I feel like with all my makeup because I do have so much but I'm still really happy with this purchase and really I wish this was all I had bought I bought this and then I did end up buying also one of the little blush palettes it was the shade called I think orange truffle I'll put it up here I've since decluttered that and the reason that I got rid of it is because because the shades were like the same. It was four blushes, but they were literally the exact same shade. And I just didn't need that. I think I was just, I mean, I remember when I was on the site, I was kind of just browsing, seeing what was around. And really I went to buy this and then browsed around and picked up another item. And I wish that I had just bought the thing I wanted, got it, get out of there, you know, pay the shipping. That's the thing. I'm just trying to like get over, like things cost money to ship. I don't know why we think it shouldn't cost any money to ship us things to our house. Of course that should cost money. People who are bringing those items to you should be paid for that. Like what? You want the convenience of it being shipped to your house but you don't want to also pay like not trying to use free shipping as a way to just add things to my orders. That's like, you know, something I have been working through. It's like five bucks, but I will add a whole cart full, you know, of stuff so that I can get free shipping. They've really tricked us, haven't they? They've really tricked our brains. Anyway, happy with this, not happy with the other thing I bought, and um, I've since gotten rid of it. So half and half for that one. And, you know, these little palettes are really nice from BH. I've had to try to like get out of the mindset of collecting too much because that's definitely something that can happen to me. I, I do like to collect in my life, just in general. It's like a fun thing to me. So I've had to make sure I'm not doing that with these, you know, square palettes from BH. But yeah, that's just something I'm watching. <laughs> okay. This is, uh, I don't know if I warned you, this will be a long video. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy that. I know you guys do, the, the ones of you who do, do. So you know, let's see what else. Where should we start next? Let's talk more about like a one off purchase. This was something that was more utilitarian, you know, looking at the entirety of this haul. And I decided to pick up this quite large, like this is a jumbo size of the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Pink Juice Moisturizer. I think this might have been either 40% off or maybe this size was only available on Glow Recipe, but this is something that I had bought many times. This is something that Sam uses. And really we go between this for him and the Rodial Dragon's Blood Cream, which I actually have some of that because I found it on a discount. Cause that's like a hundred dollars. <laughs> 
I don't know who's actually <laughs> bought it for $100, but that is the retail price. I was able to get it like more for like 25. And so I'll pick that one up or I'll pick this one up. It just depends. He likes both of them and they work really well. So this is gone. Okay, <laughs> so this is an amazing, great purchase, right? It lasted us quite a while. I mean, we can get a few more pumps. We're the ones like scraping the bottle type people, but um, you know, this lasted us quite a while, almost the whole year with other moisturizers, you know, being worked in and trying and whatnot. So this was a great purchase. I can't remember the price right now. I think it was probably like in the 40s maybe. And I'm happy I made that purchase, just bought it off their website. And we definitely got our money's worth out of that one. So that was a good one. Next, let's talk about Dossier. I decided to pick up a few perfumes from Dossier. And if you don't know, this is a brand that kind of like dupes high-end perfumes. And they have these nice bottles, but you know, there's nothing too fancy to them. They don't have like a unique design um, and they kind of just look I don't know, like laboratory or like simple. They're very simple. So I picked up two different ones. This one's Woody Sandalwood and this smells like Le Labo Santal 33. And then this one is Woody Sage and this smells like Joe Malone's Wood Sage and Sea Salt, I think. So there's a distinct difference between these two. <laughs> this one has gotten used for sure, but um, this one has been used hard, okay? <laughs> There's barely any left, I'm almost done. I'll probably be done with this, honestly, by Black Friday because it is one of my favorite perfumes. I've talked about it in videos, so I know that if you guys watch my channel regularly, then you probably have heard me talk about this a few times, but I'm very into this scent. I mean, I think it smells pretty dang close to the Le Labo one, and I think I mentioned this in one of my most recent favorites, or at least a favorites video this year, and I said in there that although I love this and I think Dossier is a great option if you don't have the money for a full size, of a really expensive brand's perfume. I do think that once I finish this up, I will probably just purchase the actual Le Labo one. I feel like this is a pretty good test that I like the fragrance and I do think that it will be worth the money for me. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. But I think that Dossier can be a great way for you to try out different scents if that's something you want. I will say I also just you know, there's some things about Dossier I don't like. I'll leave the video I made kind of just ranting about them essentially, if you haven't <laughs> seen it, you might enjoy it. Because I, like, they started texting me and emailing me. It was just so much. Just some of their marketing stuff I'm not a fan of. <laughs> like, just the decisions being made and like what's happening there. Not how I would do it, but I will say product-wise, I do think that it's pretty good. And so, um, yeah, this I suggest if you were wanting to try the Le Labo. I think I ended up buying both of these for like 60 bucks, so they came out to $30 a piece. And the Le Labo for, you know, comparison is like 190 for the bottle. So definitely a savings. This one I don't particularly love, but I also think that my scent is changing a lot of what I've been enjoying. So I don't even know if I'll, I'll finish the whole bottle or keep it. Uh, I might actually get rid of that soon. That's kind of the dossier stuff. Happy with the purchases, glad I tried it out. I'm glad honestly that I bought it too. Like I had many opportunities for gifting from dossier, but I'm glad I just spent my own money, got my own experience, all that type of stuff, so. Yeah. Okay, anyway, let's move on from that, seriously. Next, let's talk about the Charlotte Tilbury order I made. This was the first time that I was gonna try Charlotte Tilbury. I had some things on my list that I wanted to try. I was like, maybe I'll be a bougie bitch and I'll try some luxury stuff because I tend to go more like Sephora style, like, I don't know, like I feel like it's more mid-range because it's not quite luxury. I don't know, yeah, the mid-range stuff or like indie stuff, which tends to kind of be in the mid-range pricing as well. But I don't think that I'm usually a luxury girl. I'm more that than ever probably in my life, but even then, like I don't just love luxury necessarily for luxury. It's gotta be a good product too. Anyway, I decided to buy some stuff from Charlotte Tilbury, all that to say, right? I do have a video of me trying just like all the Charlotte Tilbury stuff. So if you wanna see that, I'll leave it linked down below. It was a pretty big purchase to me. I spent like $150 and I got quite a few things. So I do think that I saved a decent amount of money and you know, took advantage of like the sale and the like Black Friday-ness of it all, like all of that, but definitely some losers, okay? Definitely some loser items. So we'll talk about the wins, I think first, things that I would happily repurchase again knowing what I know now, and that would be the Hollywood Flawless Filter. I'm realizing that, um, you know, some of the, the 
wording is coming off my bottle, which is kind of lame uh, considering the price point, but I do understand the hype from this product. I think there are quite a few uh, dupes at this point that have come out that you probably don't need to spend this amount of money to get this look if you don't want to, but I understand the hype for it. And I do think it's a really pretty product. If you want something that's glowy without foundation, you could use this. If you want something under, you could use this. If you want this as your actual highlighter, you could do it. I get the hype. I do enjoy this. I'm glad to have tried it and have it in my collection. The other item that I truly have enjoyed is the Pillow Talk Beauty Wand. This is, yeah, the Pillow Talk shade, which I use kind of as this blush highlighter hybrid. And I've really enjoyed that about it. Something about the way this blends out is just beautiful. Like this product is top notch. I really do like it. Um, they have different colors. They have like more blushy ones and more highlighter ones. There's like this weird part of me that wants to like pick up other shades, but I don't think I'll actually do that. I just want to enjoy the one I have, love the one I have. I'm not even sure once that's used up if I will buy another one, but I've just been thoroughly happy with using this. I totally understand why people like it. And I find that it's quite unique to other formulas that I've tried in just mm, there's something about it. it's just nice it's very nice that being said one of the items I don't even have anymore that I purchased that is a powder highlighter I'm gonna put it here this was something that I kind of just added I added to the cart last minute I should have not because first off it's like $55 which how is that just a, a last minute add-on yeah I don't know the shine on this was not very good I didn't really like the color I didn't like the even the compact was kind of cheap feeling I thought like just everything about this did not work for me I don't think it's the worst product ever but for the expectations and the price just totally not good. I would choose so many other things over this. So I decided just to like let it go and not have it. The other purchase was this Magic Away Liquid Concealer. I think liquid <laughs> It's a little bit generous because this is more of a cream. It's so thick, dude. There are so many issues with this product. And this is one where I think I bought all three of these in some type of bundle. Like she tends to do that for different sales and whatnot. So I'm pretty sure that's how I got roped into getting this and kind of, you know, I do love a concealer. I was looking for a concealer and had this worked like I thought it would, like even like the Maybelline one that I've enjoyed in the past because it is one of those, ugh. That's one of the issues. That's one of the issues. The lid is so horrible. Everyone's like complaining about it. I'm telling you, if I had read one review, I would have saved myself a lot of trouble. Anyway, because it has like the sponge tip like this, I really thought this will be like the high-end version, the luxury version of the Maybelline. No, the Maybelline is 10 billion times better than this. The product in here is too thick for the type of dispensing that's happening here. So then this gets really gummy in a way that's like, disgusting and I know people have their own issues with sponges on products I don't mind it if it's gonna work and I'm you know going through it and not keeping it for seven years then it's not a big deal to me but this product just sucks packaging sucks the product is fine I guess if you can get it out even um, just really disappointing the lesson I've learned for this is like when it comes to foundations and when it comes to concealers I definitely want to do as much research as I possibly can just to avoid some of this like I feel like this is one that had I read the reviews, I mean, they're quite bad just talking about packaging alone. The reviews roast this to hell. So I think that could have been something that stopped me from buying it. And I wish that that had happened. I might try to keep using it. I haven't decided. I haven't decided what I want to do with this. And that's also me learning that base products mean a lot to me. So I do like having good foundations, good concealers, but I tend to use the same one over and over if I like it. Like it works. I like it sweet, move on to like beautiful eyeshadows. And so I don't need to be testing out, you know, multiple concealers a month or, you know, even multiple concealers within a quarter. And so yeah, just some things I learned from that. And then the free gift. So I got some things on a discount because of Black Friday, but then for Black Friday, they also were doing a free quad. And this is quite a big value. These retail for like 50 bucks. And this is the Bella Sophia. I think I didn't have a choice. They just, this is the one I got. <laughs> and it's pretty. I think in one part of my life, I would have hated this and you know maybe with maturity and getting older and whatnot there is a part of me that understands why people like this stuff you know like I understand why something neutral like this is something people like because they wear it every day and I definitely don't need a bunch of mattes and all that so these satins shades work for me it's compact it's nice you can travel with it like I get it not my favorite color story 
compared to maybe what else she has, but it's nice. And the look that I did in the video that I filmed with these products, I felt so freaking beautiful. And I think that's something I'm learning with some of these palettes that maybe initially look boring. Like, ugh, where's the sparkle? Where's the color? Like they might look boring in the pan, but actual use actually on, I feel so freaking beautiful. And um, that is something I, I'm having like to, I'm trying to realize like, okay, just cause it looks boring and maybe doesn't immediately inspire you doesn't mean that it's not a good product or not something that you actually do get use out of. And so, so that's something I'm kind of dealing with and kind of really trying to think about. Anyway, yeah, that was the free little quad, the Sophia Bella. Overall, glad I made the purchase. I recently bought some stuff from Charlotte Tilbury. I did like a little luxury haul. I'll leave that link down below if you want to check it out. But I don't think that overall Charlotte Tilbury is a brand that I will like keep going, you know, it's, I, I don't feel that way about it really. I enjoy some of the products. I get why people like it. It's not quite me, not quite all the way, you know? So um, I don't have like a huge desire to keep buying tons and stuff and keep up with all the new launches, especially cause a lot of it's lip products too. And I'm not really into that. But speaking about lip products, let's talk about it. Another kind of like last minute order that I decided to make was from Dose of Colors and it was for their liquid lipsticks. They were buy one, get one free. And so normally these are $20 a piece, but they ended up being two for 20 essentially. So I picked up four different colors and I'm so happy with this purchase. I think this was a really good one for me. This is like what I want my purchases to be. Even though it was last minute, it was something that was kind of like on my list. I had been thinking about it, you know? I feel like this is a purchase that shows I won. I don't know if that makes sense, but I got the discount and also used them. And so I didn't just buy because the discount, but then never use the products. I didn't just buy because of a sale or get excited. I actually bought during the sale, so I saved money and I actually used them and they're what I want. And I didn't get overwhelmed. I didn't buy like 20 of them. I didn't buy the whole line of them. You know, this feels like the good purchase to me. <laughs> I love the Dose of Colors liquid lipsticks. They're my favorite, I think, I'm, I'm pretty sure. So I ended up getting the shade Truffle, which is a really beautiful like neutral shade. I've used this quite a bit. It looks great with my neutral lip liners. Today I'm wearing Chocolate Wasted, which is a really beautiful brown. I love wearing brown lipsticks going into fall anytime. You can wear them with a bright like yellow eye, a golden eye, a more neutral look, a more simplistic look and let your lips be the star of the show. So I, I really love that color. I have this beautiful brownie red called Brick. And more recently I wore this hot pink one. So really all of them I've worn and gotten use out of, which is like, fuck yeah. <laughs> oh, that's always a good thing, gosh. And I also just, I love the formula. I think that they all perform really well. I think I did a good job picking the colors out that I thought would would look good. And I've realized that I do like a liquid lipstick, especially for, I think they look so good. Like I love seeing myself in it on the camera and like editing back and just all that. I think that the matte lip really, I can make my lips look a little bit fuller and I think it looks nice. So anyway. <laughs> I'll stop raving. Really wish I picked up Nima's collab. I'm trying to get a little bit better, like I said. And again, I can talk more about this maybe later, but I've had to have like a really big, weird mental shift when it comes to buying now than even just a year and a half ago. What that means, how that is for where I'm at with my, it's just so different. And it's hard when you've been trying to think one way and now you have to like flip it, but you're still trying to be cognizant. It's a tough like little balance for me personally to strike. And, and I'm definitely still trying to figure that out but I really wish I had bought those that collab at least the red one that was so pretty oh I didn't though I don't and I think they're sold out I should look okay I think there are three more like orders left so let's just get it done okay I decided to pick up some stuff from kimchi chic this was a brand that had been on my list I wanted to try it was just more of like an exploratory thing and so I picked up two different blush duos and a highlighter and I only have one blush duo left <laughs> I got rid of the other blush I got rid of the highlighter I would say I regret it because obviously almost half of it, over half of it didn't work out for me. But again, I'm glad I tried it. I'm glad I tried the stuff, so, you know, see what I saw, tried what I tried, know what I know. But yeah, it, it kind of is unfortunate that more didn't work out for me. This is the blush that I ended up keeping. I loved that these were duo products. I do think the packaging is just so adorably cute. I ended up getting this kind of more punchy one. This is the shade Mercedes. This isn't something that I obviously would wear every single day, but 
I do like blush draping. I do like a blush. So I keep this one around and it's one that I'll probably keep around for a very long time in my collection to have. I also think that the formula of this blush works well for these colors. It is a more pigmented, bright, poppy, punchy type of blush. And so it works well to have bright, poppy, punchy colors in that same kind of formula. It works. The other color that I have, I'll put up here, was a little bit more neutral. And although it's pretty, it was a bit too, for me, pigmented for what I like every single day. And so I found I just wasn't reaching for it. And it felt like it was just collecting dust and I wouldn't want to reach for it in my collection. I also had just, you know, with use, realized that the colors, although they looked more brown in the pan, the way that they translated onto my skin was a lot more pink and I just didn't love that. So I ended up getting rid of that blush for those reasons. Um, and then I I also tried the highlighter. It was a duo as well. I was so excited for this. I really wanted it to work, but it just wasn't very glowy. It felt like a soft powder on my face. I didn't really get that much shine from it at all. And so I personally didn't like that at all. I was very shocked that it didn't have more shine. I really thought it was gonna be more, you know, stand out and all that, but it felt very like soft glow from within and that's not really my style. So I ended up getting rid of that one as well. I just wish more of them had worked out. Next, I did pick up two things from Sephora during kind of whatever they were doing. So I ended up getting this Rowan quad, which Rowan is no longer sold at Sephora, but this is the 1111 and I love this. You guys know that at this point, I feel like this I really liked at the beginning and then I kind of put it away and then, you know, now I'm even more into this than I was before. So very happy with this color. You know, I talked about this quite a bit, so I'm sure you've seen this on the channel, but I'm very happy with this and I've since purchased more things just from Rowan, like from the site. Glad I tried it. And then the other thing that I bought was a set from Fenty and I'm not sure if I got this on a discount. I have a feeling this maybe was discounted but maybe not. I knew that I wanted to get the Rowan Quad kind of regardless. So either way, if you buy it um, on a discount or full price, I think it's worth it. Anyway, back to this. There was this set from Fenty. It was two cream products and a lip gloss. So I picked that up and I really love the Fenty Glow blush that's in there. I think this is such a pretty color. It's like this brownie kind of warm color for me. So I wear it as like this nice little blush and I blush drape and I usually use it as a layering product. So I'll put this on with my cream products and then I'll layer blush on top. And I'm wearing it today, um, but I did put uh, Songbird from Becca over it. I really loved it when I first got it. I still think it's an amazing formula and all that. Something I'm glad though that I didn't do is go buy like a million of these blushes because I liked this one so much. I'm glad I didn't do that. I think that would have been a mistake, but was something that I was maybe kind of thinking in my head after trying this. So that's a good thing. And then the other thing that came with it, this is one of the diamond bombs. This is the Fenty Glow one. This I don't get nearly as much use out of. I think as like an eyeshadow topper, it can be pretty. And I think if I had a more minimal collection, I would get more use out of this because I would, you know, have less options of what I could use on my eyes. And then I would like reach for this, but I don't use this enough, I think. Um, I don't know if I wanna get rid of it. I don't feel like bad having it in my collection, but I, I wish that maybe it got a little bit more, more use out of it. It's a beautiful product. I could totally understand how this could work for people and like, you know, be a part of their daily routine or how they do their makeup quite often, but I just haven't found that yet, but I'm willing to keep it in my collection. And I thought it was a good set overall. The last things that I have to show you guys are from Ulta. This was more of a last minute purchase as well. And this is probably if I had any regrets, maybe the items would come from this haul. And that's mostly because it was last minute and some of the things I bought were nostalgia based instead of more current me based, you know? Like I let that nostalgia get me a little bit on this stuff. So two things that I would have picked up, glad I picked up. This is the Revolution Stick Foundation in F4. I'm wearing it today just to, you know, have it on my face, but I love this stick foundation. This is a repurchase, so I knew buying this that I liked it. And I'm like probably over halfway done with this one. I could see myself repurchasing this at some point. It's kind of one of those ones if someone was like, hey, do you have a foundation from the drugstore that you like? I'd probably recommend this just because I have gone through, you know, now almost two of them. And I like the color on me. I like how creamy it is, how it blends out, all the things. It's nice. It's a good product and I enjoy it. The other thing I really like is this CoverGirl Easy Breezy Brow. This needs to go on my empties, guys. Jeez. I really do like this as a brow uh, like gel that's colored and it does have a bit of a hold to it, which I like. This 
is my second one too. I got the first one in PR, I bought this one, and I can see myself buying another one, but you guys have given me some really great options to look into. So I'm definitely gonna try some of those out before I go back to this. But again, this is something I would recommend to people. I tend to recommend things like when I think truly of someone being like, what should I buy? I tend to stick to things that I've repurchased because they are so tried and true. And I feel like it's the best option of someone else actually getting use out of and enjoying. So those two were good. The rest of the, the haul. One of those things was this sleek. I did get like 40% off on it, but this I was buying because do you remember when this was popular? This is the Cleopatra. Uh, highlighting pal palette, Cleopatra's Kiss. I bought this for nostalgia. I remember when I used to just wanna try sleeks, like they had this rose gold blush. They had, I think a blush called Lace. They had blush trios uh, palettes. One was like called Pumpkin or something. Like I remember the Secret Garden palette, all the little palettes, the acid something palette. Like there was a time when sleek makeup was something I really wanted cause they didn't have it in the US. And I was like, oh, I want the sleek stuff. And that nostalgia got to me for this palette and I wish it didn't. It's not that this is the worst, it's just I don't love it. I don't love it. I think that it's fine. So I definitely see myself decluttering this and these are the type of purchases I really try to avoid even making in the first place. Things that are completely based off nostalgia, I try to weed those things out before they come into my life and this one got through and it probably won't stay long and I want things that are gonna stay a long time in my collection. And the other thing too, this is the Revlon Kiss Balm. I've gone through, this is a repurchase of this, but I repurchased it based off nostalgia. I had panned this back in the day and I just, you know, yeah, it's fun, it smells good. It's not the best lip balm, you know, and I just didn't need it. It wasn't a big cost. I think this was like $2 or $3. Like, I'm not out a bunch of money for it, but it is a thing in my life I didn't need. It's a thing in my collection I didn't need. And again, I just feel like it's one of those purchases that could have just not been made and I would have been completely fine had I just resisted that urge online, you know? So those two definitely, didn't need. And then something I don't have, I've already decluttered, is a freebie. This came free with my order and it was actually from Kylie Cosmetics. It was one of the lip kits in the shade Bare. It came with the liquid lipstick, it came with the lip liner, and both of them are not for me. I didn't like the liquid lipstick. The color was not my favorite, but that's just personal preference. But even just formula wise, just really not my favorite for liquid lipsticks, kind of drying. Ugh. And then the, the lip liner also um, was one of those ones that is super creamy, but then really locks down on the lips and I don't really like that either. So both of those are a bust and I've since decluttered them. And that's everything I bought. We did it. We made it to the end, I can't believe it. Overall, again, like I said, pretty happy with this stuff. I have some really big like winners, things that I think will stay in my collection a long time. A lot of like first time purchases from brands and I'm glad I got to like get a bit of a sale, but I think I also came away with hopefully some lessons to try to take into the future for myself. Anyway, that I'm gonna end it here. It's really not that big of a deal. It's just a haul in retrospect. Those are kind of my retrospective emotions and thoughts on these products after the fact almost a year later. It was a lot of stuff to bring into my collection at one point as well. And I definitely think that I do like buying things a little bit here and there and trying those items as they come in instead of like having nothing and then everything. Um, I just find that things can fall through the cracks. You cannot actually use all those things at once. And I just prefer that, you know, like a little trickle here and there as opposed to nothing and then everything when it ends up kind of evening out to the same amount of money and amount of products anyway. So anyway, that's everything. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.